The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have a nice square sheet. So I just rough cut this on my table saw, but the uh, you know the corners aren't perfectly 90 degrees. And for repeatable cuts, or not uh, cuts, but for repeatable engraving, we want to make sure that I can square this up into the honeycomb bed, and it's always going to be in the same position. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut. Uh, the sides so that I have a good true 90 degree angle at least in accordance with my laser bed. All right, now we've got the side cut here. Uh, so that has been laser cut, so it is nice and straight. And now what we're gonna do is cut basically the y-axis here so that we have a good solid corner uh, for repeatable frame. Okay, and like I said, the this piece was just rough cut and now you can see the difference there between one side and the other. And we'll just pop that off. And now I can remove my little origin guide there. Now we have a nice squared up piece from one corner to the next all the way around. And this is going to be easy to place in the bed every time I set up the rotary. So now we're going to cut holes for the rotary so that that gets positioned the same every time I put the, that device in the machine. Now the next step we need to do is figure out exactly where this is gonna be positioned. So this is a, it's fairly arbitrary as far as, as you know where I'm putting it in the bed. I just uh, when I was setting up my other rotary, I had figured out a good start position, and so I'm gonna base the location of this jig on that one. Um, again, I'm gonna have to tweak it because, as you can see, that's where my laser basically starts uh, for my four wheel rotary. But this one, uh, whereas you know this the tumbler now this is this dot is act you know is off because the distance is it's not set to the correct focal distance right now but the x y coordinates where the laser head is right now is where my tumbler would be on the four wheel rotary if this is the opening of the tumbler whereas i'm going to have to come further in on the the x axis to uh to start because it's obviously going to be positioned over here but that's kind of the last step is tweaking that, and then that's just a saving a setting in Lightburn so that I can always run the uh, head here. So now that I've got this in here and I've got a good idea of where I want to position this, the next trick is gonna be to take it out and figure out the location of the feet and then mark it and cut holes in this board for, the, uh, for this so that every time I put it in, it's always in the same position. These are the measurements that I came up with for the rotary chuck. So 580 millimeters by 153 millimeters, that's the uh, length and width. And then uh, the feet are basically the, uh, where, the, where it's gonna sit on the tube side of the laser bed, that 25.2 uh, millimeters square, that's gonna be the center of the holes. And then on the uh, opposite side, it's gonna come 25.2 in from the sides and then up 28.2. So we've mapped this out into a light burn using absolute coordinates. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark it first. And then once we, uh, if I'm happy with that, then we'll go ahead and cut out the holes. So we're going to go ahead and cut that now. And I've got this secured down with some uh, hold downs that I 3D printed. Those are available on my Etsy shop, by the way. So if you need some hold downs that work really well in the bed, uh, these are great. 
They uh, they have been modified so that they fit the Omtech honeycomb, and you can see they work both both directions. So very versatile, and uh, they they work great. And you don't have to worry about you know the magnets. Um, heard a lot of people pinch fingers with those magnets. So let's get this cut. So, as you can see, these just come out super easy. So we'll pop those out, and we got a nice clean cut. All these guys fall right out. And so we'll clear this, and then we'll put the rotary in, and we should be in business. Last step will be setting a start point. Okay, so everything has been cut, and now the uh, rotary is in. And I'm going to just do a, uh, a quick, I'm not going to cut any or engrave anything today, but uh, just wanted to give you a little tip on working with uh, various items here. So this is a circle center finder, something I 3D printed. I'll, point it, I'll post a link. It, this is freely available on Thingiverse. Uh, but basically, when you have two lines that are tangent to the circle, a line that intersects... Uh, those is going to be uh, perpendicular to that circle. So I can, this point right here, if I mark that on the cup, is roughly, now this is still an eyeball, but if you wanted to engrave something on the front of this cup, or, you know, that would face a right-handed person, then this is basically going to be the center, so I can mark that right here. If I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, roughly centered on the opposite side of the handle, then I could do this, and again, if it were a left-handed person, and I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to have my image or words, whatever you are etching on the cup on, you know, so it faces a left-handed person, then you can just simply mark it there. So now that I have the laser positioned, you can see the mark that I put there, which would be my center for my framing, uh, for whatever design I wanted to put on here. I can program light burn so that I can get the laser head to come back to this exact position, which is really useful because when you're putting in the rotary, you want uh, you know the head to be out of the way. So I can send it back to its uh, kind of home or origin position. I can put in the uh, rotary and then I can bring the head back to this exact position before I disconnect the y-axis and plug in the rotary um, you do if uh, if you were doing something like this you have to be very careful with that handle and making sure that that as it spins doesn't hit into the, to the laser lens we'll cover that in a later video when I'm actually uh, setting up something to engrave uh, but just again, it, it, it'll make things a lot easier to set up these uh, engravings. So there you've got the uh, laser position and basically I just used the uh, Ruida controller here to manually jog it into place. So we can say basically 221 and 195.5 or you could use those exact values. Um, but then just coming over here into light burn, what you're able to do is if you go into the move tab, you can, you've got these saved positions. And so I've set a, uh, if you just click on manage here, it'll bring up a window. It will, uh, you just, you can click add new. And when you do that, it's going to pull the, the file, the, the values that you uh, got currently in there. You can give it a name and then just, you just hit okay. I've already done that so you can see that I've got rotary or chuck rotary position saved at 221 and 195.5. And now if I go, if I send it to the upper right area, now my uh, laser head has basically gone back to my typical starting position. And I could go ahead and put in my rotary and then 
if I when I want to start a uh, start a new cut, all I have to do is if I can get my mouse to work. I can just go down to that chuck start rotary position, and you'll see, and the laser head's going to move, boom, right back. And then I could just disconnect my Y uh, my Y motor and plug in the rotary, and I'd be good to go.